Good morning. Uh, for those of you who are, are not aware of what ICX is, I'm supposed to promote Spain. So what I will do now is I, I won't do that. I will share stories with you following David's advice. I will tell you some stories about what's going on in Spain. But by the way, any of you has ever been to Spain? Okay, how many of you have been to Spain outside Barcelona? <laughs> okay, that's, uh, that's uh, more diversity that, that I thought of. And how many of you would think that that reflects well what Spain is all about? I'll tell you why. We are the comeback country. We were not going to be entering the European community at the time. We were not going to be entering the Euro, and we were going to be kicked out of the Euro. We are in the European community. We are a founding member of the Euro, and we were not kicked out of the Euro. And what doesn't that relate to the rebel spirit that you can find over here? Doesn't that resonate with a society that's very much based on resiliency? And what has that got to do with the way we are and work? We are world leaders in renewable energies, and we have no energy resources. We are world leaders together with Israel in everything that has to do with water, and not the least, we are world leaders in infrastructure. We don't have much water, we, our water is badly distributed, and we have a very cruel geography. So, what I will tell you now is how this way, this situation, these circumstances, this way of thinking has led to a certain way in which we understand the smart city phenomena. But before that, let me guess one thing. If I say smart city and say Spain, let me guess what you will be thinking of. Am I right? Okay, so let me share. I mean, here we are in, in Innovation Group, and innovation has very much to do with curiosity. And curious people know that secrets usually are to be found there where most people are not looking for them. So, yes, Barcelona is a world reference in the field of smart cities. That's where it's, why, why the World Mobile Congress is held there. That's why the Smart City Expo is a world reference as far as Smart City goes. But Toledo has smart solution when it comes to solving its uh, public lighting. Cordoba has, uh, we, we heard before John Kloss telling us about the need of engaging communities. Cordoba ha has a pledge to its citizens. It's, we need your help to solve our problems. And that basically means that if you tell us of anything that's not working in the city, our pledge is that we will solve it within 72 hours. That's not just participation, that's leading to engagement. As well, other cities like Valladolid have apps. I mean, how can you have a small city without apps? We, we know that. But those apps help people to save time, and they help them as well to save uh, energy and petrol and they help them to pay for those parking spaces. We even have a smart island, El Hierro. For those of you who are more knowledgeable of Spain, these are, uh, w this is one of the seven islands that uh, is in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and the, within the Canary, where the supply of energy is fully renewable and there is full coverage regarding Wi-Fi. And we obviously have Santander, which is a world reference. Our mayor is here with us, and he is the leader of one of the things that makes Spain different in the smart city. And this is my first message to you. We have 62 cities within the Spanish network of smart cities. Why? Because we refuse to believe that smart cities is an exclusive phenomenon. We need to make it inclusive. Before, we've heard about the possibility of this just being a trend that fades away a trend that disappears into a passing fad. In order for that not to happen, we need 
to make smart cities a platform, not just base the smart city solutions in platforms, but also to make sure that the whole country is involved in that, because it's an issue that involves most of the citizens of the, of the country. And we also have our solutions not just in Spain. I mean, we know that the, the real test is to see whether you can do things outside. So we have smart cities responsibilities in places like London, Birmingham has entrusted a Spanish company with all its public services for the next 30 years. The cell phone towers in Italy have been taken over by a Spanish company to carry out an integrated solution regarding smart cities. There where there is a security need in places like El Quito, uh, Quito, there is also a Spanish solution. We are involved in e-government abroad as well as integral smart cities outside our country. And we know we cannot do things on our own. That's why our companies and even our municipalities are partnering with universities, with experts all over the world in places like Sheffield or even MIT, as it's the case in Santander. But so far, so good. So we've managed to achieve some things. We've managed to increase our energy efficiency. And we've managed to secure a place under the sun regarding smart cities. We managed to remain within the cool club. We are also, we, we have our own bit of sababa, as I believe you call it here, okay? However, there is a long way that lies ahead. And this is where this job which I have, which is not as fascinating as David, but it's a work that I can say that sometimes is more fun than fun, allows me to see what's happening, on, what's happening in other places outside Spain. What's the problem with smart cities? What's the challenge now? Well, basically, the first challenge is, as you see there in the US, building from the US experiences, it's difficult to find the funding for the project. Well, this is a very important topic. Why? Because smart cities so far have become for public services procurement what installment payments became for private consumption. That is, basically, it gives you the possibility to have today what you are not capable of paying for today. But by focusing on that, we are missing the engagement factor which John Kloss talked about. So basically, the communities are not engaged and there, there is lack of clarity regarding the benefits. And that explains why, to be very frank with you, citizens recently sent a message in the last local elections telling our mayors, smart cities might be cool, but we don't understand very much why, what they're all about. And that's why, as Joan Claus said before, now they have a new mayor in the smartest of all smart cities in Spain, according to Fortune 2014. And the reason is that smart cities, as you'll see there, are primarily set up to cover public services, Secondly, to bring up new business opportunities. And only thirdly, are focused or perceived to be focused on increasing the quality of life of citizens. So there is a need to readjust this. And I think we're going to hear a lot about that. There is a need to evolve from technology-driven solutions. Basically, we're doing this because we are capable of doing it. And we're doing it separately, one solution for public lighting, a different solution for mobility, a different solution for water metering. We need to go to integrated solutions. Yes, but that's not enough. We need to engage the citizen. And that's what the culture part comes in, and the community part comes in. I mean, to me, it's a small detail not to be overlooked that the first person in, to, in, in this stage to talk about communities has been David, if I've not skipped someone else doing it, saying it. And communities are basic to make the smart city projects viable. That's Spain. So if you've been to Spain and you've been to Malaga, that's where this picture was taken, that's where I'm from, and you ask for a café, those of you who speak Spanish, you probably found the waiter looking at you a bit puzzled, saying, what do you exactly mean by un café? Okay? Because, you know, we have all those kinds of coffees. And that happens only there. So smart, how do you get a city to be smarter? How do you 
built on the proliferation of sensors without losing the uniqueness of the cities. To be very frank with you, when I walk around, what I see are cities that are becoming less and less interesting every day. The people are more interesting every day, but the city look is, more, is less interesting. I find the same kinds of cafes everywhere, the same kinds of shops everywhere. So is that necessary for a city to be smart? Is that something that the city needs to sacrifice? Or, on the other hand, is it possible for a city to keep its sensors without losing its senses and its sense of purpose? So here's the challenge. That's where the population is going to be growing in the coming years. That's where you have the self-proclaimed smart cities in the world. Do you notice the mismatch? So basically, unless we make smart cities more inclusive, there where we have them, and more, and we extend the concept, because that, let's not forget that the urban growth is going to happen in Asia in the coming years, and we don't have that many smart cities over there. So this is no small project. But it's a project in which the participation of entrepreneurs is key. Because if there's something that entrepreneurs are good at, it's basically managing uncertainty. It's basically turning uncertainty into opportunities. But for those of you who uh, re can recall this scene, it's basically Alice goes there and she asks the cat which way should she take. And the cat tells her, well, that depends on where you want to go. And Alice says, well, anywhere. Then the cat says, well, don't worry. All roads will take you there. So the problem with some cities is that they're losing their concept. They're rich in so solutions, but they're poor in concept. So we need to recover human-centered innovation. And that human-centered innovation requires the alignment of skills, the alignment of the mindset, and the alignment of the motivation. And that's what, something that entrepreneurs are very good at. And there's another thing that entrepreneurs are very good at. It's moving away from research and development into experience and scalability. Okay, start, startups are great. We need them. But let's not forget that we need to scale up. But we also need to factor in our mistakes. That's a picture taken this summer on an old uh, national highway that used to cross through different villages. Now it's closed down, luckily. Well, all it took was to build a sidewalk for, to, just to give people the opportunity to increase their health and their sporting opportunities. Now they call it Cholesterol Avenue because you have all these people looking after their health just walking up and down it. So you need to incorporate mistakes. But basically, and here I go back to the spring from the beginning, smart cities, yes, but cities need to be resilient because things don't always turn out the way you expected them to be. And for those who might think that this is a kind of bland concept, please bear in mind that Rand Corporation is saying that this is key. You need to know which your asset adds, you need to connect your communities, and you need to put those communities to work together to make sure that next time something happens, they'll be able to respond more effectively. And I think this is very relevant for cities, and particularly this might be relevant as the Mayor mentioned here. And just let me finish with one last story that will tell you what Spain is all about. I started telling you, talking about technology, and I'm sure this is a forum where if we took a vote, probably most of you would say that the future of the world is likely to be determined by technology. But let me tell you something. Let me share this little story with you. This is the world distribution, the European distribution of donations per million inhabitants. And I'm very proud, genuinely proud to say that Spain leads the world regarding donate, organ donations. We're a small country, 45, inhabit, 45 million inhabitants. By the way, we do have a, a, a border with Africa as well. Just it's another thing that we share with Israel. But we are the world leaders. La, uh, we do 6% of organ donations worldwide. 36, according to the last data, 36 per million. The average in Europe, it's 20. In the US, it's 26, just so that you can compare. And it's a tremendous, tremendously complex process. So you would, th you would think that the brain 
of this is really sophisticated. So let me show it to you. You see the map with the pins? You can almost see the post-it notes there on the computers. This is the brain of the place, because there's a guy who has a purpose. That guy has been responsible, created that thing, the one who is standing next to the prime minister 25 years ago, and he has been running it for 21 of the last 25 years. He has a purpose, he has a brain, and he is part of a community. He's not a community manager. He's a true community leader, and he relies on the doctors which at different hospitals are telling them where their organs are available because they know that tomorrow they can be the receptors of an organ that can save the life of one of its patients. And so sit, this is just, and I will close with this one, to tell you what this is all about. Smart cities, what Spain is all about, and why we feel that we can lead this. And when we feel that we have a message to share with others. That's Jose Ortega, said our philosopher, who is famous for one quote above all. I am I and my circumstance. If I don't save it, I cannot save myself. That's what smart cities are all about. They are about communities. They are about understanding that individuals are also citizens. But above all, they need to be part of our community. And if cities don't change from bureaucracies into communities, we won't be able to scale up all the smart city phenomenon. Thank you very much.